When Peter Tork was a member of the iconic 60s rock band, The Monkees, he always wanted to be respected as a serious musician. Well, today he's still playing and having more fun than a, well, more fun than ever the second time around. Here's John Crane. <laughs> It ain't your fault, baby. Peter Tork is finding happiness in the blues. Go ahead and do what you gotta do. He survived adversity and has reinvented himself. When not touring with his band, Shoe Suede Blues, Peter can be found hanging out with his friends and living the life of a country gentleman on his family's farm in northeastern Connecticut. Each day begins with yoga to stay fit, reflect, and gain perspective on his life in music. For years, I thought I was just going with the flow, man. It was just like, this is what it was cool, you know? And recently, I've come to see that this has always been my choice. This is what I wanted to do. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys! Cork and the Monkeys burst onto the scene in 1966, a made-for-TV phenomenon that produced four chart-topping albums in 12 months. But the height of Monkey's Madness lasted a brief two years, and Peter Tork helped end it. I quit because I wanted to do music. I thought music was the thing. I wanted the, I wanted the Monkeys to do the music. It was what I wanted, it wasn't what they wanted. Tork, born Peter Thorkelson, had been a serious musician since childhood. After dropping out of college, Peter migrated to the Greenwich Village folk music scene, hanging out with the likes of Stephen Stills and playing for coins. They moved on to California, where still suggested Torque auditioned for the Monkees. When this whole thing started to happen, my grandmother started running out and getting all the, the, the teen magazines, Tiger Beat, Monkey Spectaculars, 16 magazines. Ooh, and Hullabaloo says Peter steals the show. But he didn't steal any shows on his own, forming a couple of bands and leading a quiet but troubled life. By the 1970s, Torque was struggling with drugs, booze, and money. For a while, he taught school, and then he was once again forced back into the streets playing music for coins. Sometimes I see my life as a, you know, there's this boom, and then rebounding, where that, that bottom is that, the last moment where alcoholism was having its way with me, just at that turning point where I went, suddenly went, wait a minute, I can't do this. This is, you know, and, uh, scurried around looking for help and found the help I needed um, and, uh, and haven't had to drink since then. It's been 29 years. I haven't had to drink, haven't had to smoke a stick of dope or do a line or anything else. Oh, when I woke up one morning, the air was black as ink. Playing the blues has helped Torque stay true to himself. A lot of middle American culture is about don't be down. If you think you're down, you will be down. Don't be down. Don't think you're down, because then you'll be fine. If you're, you'll be fine. Like this, you know, crazed need to shove away life. I was looking at my future. Man, and it looks scary. The point of the blues is we've all had the blues. The blues is saying you're not alone. You feeling down? That's life. That's okay. I've been down, too. Adversity revisited Torque when he was diagnosed with a rare form of tongue cancer. When I got the diagnosis, I had a good cry. You know, I'm not immune. Uh, but then the next question is, what's next? You want me to sign this to you? Now cancer-free, Torque hit the road, with fans of all ages lining up once more. Some get emotional meeting the famous former monkey. You have no idea. You yes, my, I do. Yes, I do. You were my first concert when I was 16. Really? So. Yeah. Fabulous. This was my 14th birthday present from my mother. I uh, listened to them starting in middle school, I think. Used to do the monkeys walk down the street with my friends. I taught my friends how to walk like the monkeys. No, no, not that. <laughs> Just like this. Boom, boom. Torque isn't beyond teaching the monkey walk either. Just go ahead. Left, okay. step to the right. All right. Oh, now okay. sweep left. Okay. It looks better when you've got three or four guys doing it. Keep going, keep going. That's kind of how it's working out. This is like my dream come true, to be doing yes. the monkey walk with oh, Peter Clark. Oh, mine too. Uh, teaching somebody how to do the monkey walk 40 years later. Huh? But you won't see any monkey's memorabilia on display at his home. The gold and platinum records are hidden away in a closet, 
I thought I was going to write the book, The Monkeys on My Back. And of course, the joke is I'll always have the monkeys on my back. He refers to the rap that for many, the monkeys were a commercial imitation of a real band. Let them think what they think. Nobody doesn't get stereotyped. Nobody doesn't get scorned. Everybody's bad news in somebody's life. I used to cleave. No, no, no. Listen, you don't understand. I'm really worth something. I've got talent. I'm, I'm really. No more. Well, one of the things about Peter that very few people know, uh, unless you're a real ardent, diehard Monkey fan, is Peter was by far the most accomplished musician of all of us. In fact, Peter plays like five instruments. He plays anything. You just sit him in, in a room with a bunch of instruments and he will pick up anything and play it. It's amazing. Music is Peter Tork's life. In spite of it all, he has persevered. The thing that is most important to me is that I haven't given up, I haven't quit. I haven't quit doing the music. I haven't quit doing the, 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 what we call the exploration of the mystery. I haven't quit trying to grow up, be as real as I can with my loved ones. You know, those, I haven't quit. And I expect not to.